Hello there, I'm Leandra from Paper Artsy. It's September 2015 and it's time for us to share with you our newest product offerings. We've got a lot of new products to show you and tonight's video is all about our new paint, new limited edition set of paint and some stamps that we've got from the Hot Pick collections. So I'm going to start off with the paint. We've got four new colours in this limited edition pack. Whenever we do a limited edition set it only lasts usually for about six months. So this will probably take us through into early 2016. If you like these colours make sure you buy them because they are once they're gone they're gone. We've got in this pack some fantastic colours. Teresa Green, Granny Smith, Captain Peacock and Professor Plum. Now they're a nice little family unit and I really like greens and blues so for me they're just fantastic colours. Teresa Green is quite um, a useful light shade of green. Granny Smith is your typical apple colour. Uh, Captain Peacock is quite a jade blue and you can see how that blends beautifully through into Professor Plum to give you all kinds of other shades of bluey purples um, in between and you can kind of see how um, all the colours sort of mix and match. Match. Now all of these are opaque, so very very handy colours. Um, the opaques are really good, um, have great coverage so they're easy to work with. Uh, let me show you how these differ from existing colours because it's always good to have a quick look at that. Um, Teresa Green, if we start at the green end of scales here, scale here, Teresa Green is uh, much lighter than guacamole, which is already a very popular green. So that's a useful one to have as a nice base colour. Granny Smith is, like I said before, your typical apple colour. There is nothing like this in our paint range at the moment. All the other greens are either grey or they're very yellowy, but this is a proper apple green, so it's going to be really useful. Onto Captain Peacock, it's very much like an opaque beach hut. If you've already got beach hut, you'll know how translucent it is and the coverage is very low uh, because of that translucency. So if you want a really nice um, version of it which is more opaque, then this is really going to tick the boxes for you. And interesting to compare it to Bora Bora, you can see how much more, um, how much darker it is and how much brighter the Captain Peacock is. It's much more jade. Onto Professor Plum, really it's a perfect blend of Lynn's Bougainvillea, which was in her limited edition set that's now discontinued, and a mix of Spanish Mulberry. So it's kind of nice blend of the two of those. It's got those magenta tones coming from Lynn's Bougainvillea colour, but it's a much more plum plum than the Spanish Mulberry. Now I think that these colours work quite well for a modern Christmas style, so if you want to work with these two, you're going to get that real Christmas. Christmas vibe as you'll see in some of the artwork coming up um, or if you want to do traditional greens um, and mix it with our reds then these are going to work with that as well. This is a really useful paint set I'm sure it's going to be extremely popular and it's available now from your favorite paper artsy stockist so if you want to get your hands on it go and find the links at the bottom of our blog posts that will be listed on this video and you can find where to order these products from immediately. We've got a new glaze to show you that we're quite excited about. Um, unfortunately, this is a really very difficult thing for the camera to pick up. But I'm going to describe to you how it works and what it is. It's called Frosting Glaze, and it's a product that you can put through a stencil or you can stamp with it. And um, this is a panel that I'm holding in front of you that's um, part of our make and take for Alley Pally, which is the show coming up that we're doing in September. And um, at Alley Pally we do these quick little make and takes and we'll be using the frosting glaze on glass which is what this panel is that I'm holding. So um, the flowers I've just applied the frosting glaze with cut and dry foam through a stencil directly onto the glass and then there's a quote there which I've stamped um, in the same way that you would apply paint to cut and dry foam and then onto a stamp it's the same method. It's very very fast drying and it gives a really cool frosted glass effect. The amazing thing about this product is it dries so quickly and it's good for indoor and outdoor use. All you need to do is make sure that you're working on a clean dry surface like acrylic or acetate or glass and you can create really amazing results with it. So I'm sure you're going to have a lot of fun with that and if you want to do a make and take with us at Ali Pally then do come along and try that out. Um, this is the little sample that we'll be making which is a pretty cool little sample too. So on to our second product that we want to show you and this is drying retarder. 
Drying retarder is exactly what it says on the label. You use it to slow down the drying time of paint. Now this is a very runny product. It almost sort of looks like water in the bottle and you only need a couple of drops. No more than 5%. So if you're using a puddle of paint, make sure that no more than 5% is this product when you mix it in with the paint. So I'd recommend just one or two drops. Well, what's it useful for? Um, the most obvious thing is if you're into doing jelly prints, um, je the jelly printing technique using a printing plate is very popular at the moment. Um, and one of the hardest things working with our paint is because they're a chalk paint, they dry very fast. So this will allow the paint to slow down the drying time um, and you to be able to work on that plate for longer before you take a print. It's also going to be really useful if you live in a hot or um, climate where the paints dry out quite quickly, then you can apply a little bit of this to your paint and it will slow that down. But in any instance where you just want to extend your drying time, then this is an additive that you can add to the paint and it will do just that. So next we're going to move on and show you our new hot pick stamps for 2015 and these are the September releases. So first up we've got Halloween. This particular stamp set is really useful for other things, not just Halloween. Um, it's got these great label style images here which are quite useful um, and I love the checkerboard because it's quite small and dainty so it could be used in backgrounds really easily. Um, and again we've got these uh, collage style stamps which were very successful in our last hot pick release and I really like them because you can pick out lots of little elements you don't have to use the whole stamp. Um, if you're not familiar with our rubber this is how the stamps come if you buy them on easy mount so they are already on the foam you just peel it off your index sheet the index sheets laminated so that the stamps stick to that ready for storage um, and you can see that our stamps are very deeply etched red rubber um, and they're really really good quality. So that is the stamp. Now let me run through some art samples with you. First of all, I've got some samples from Penny Nuttall. And um, she's used, she's a real fabric genius. It's her go-to area to work with. And it's just interesting to note that this particular stamp at the top is quite a bold stamp. And she's used that onto um, a, a much more textured type fabric. So it looks almost like... Aida, the um, cross-stitching fabric, it's, but it's probably a linen. Um, and yet this particular piece here is also on fabric, but because there's so much detail in that particular stamp, she's very cleverly chosen to stamp it onto a very fine weave cotton. And because she's got this super, super smooth fabric, it picks up all the detail in the stamps. So if she'd stamped this image onto this texture fabric she wouldn't have got anywhere near the quality of uh, stamped image result like she has here so bear that in mind if you're working on fabric she's then gone on to color the stamps and, and even this background here she's used black paint she's painted up the fabric and she's even stitched into it she's used a little checkerboard there as well so there's lots of detail uh, here's another one from her, the same vein. So she's created a bottle in the background using fabric and then she's sewn on some great little embellishments here that just fit the whole theme perfectly. These two, again, she's stamped onto that beautiful fine fabric and you can really see the detail is just stunning that's come up here on the fabric and just simply layered those on so they look like um, quite cool labels. So those are great samples from uh, Penny. Now here's another one from Helen Chilton. Now this is quite interesting because the way she's done this, she's got this very feminine, delicate frame and yet she's filled it with one of, with, oh, you can see it's the stamp here, Deadly Poison, and she's coloured it all and then she's also stamped the items onto shrink plastic and stuck those on the bottom there as well. So quite a lot going on, um, even though she's got this feminine frame with all the little tiny beads and things, it's just such a great piece for Halloween. Another dimensional object here from Helen. So this is, um, a, actually it's a canvas, but she's used the niche side of the canvas rather than the front of the canvas, added some grunge paste around the edges, and then she's um, created these sort of plaques. And there's a lot more detail than what you can see is actually, um, she's really created dimension here and even stamped down here as well. So a really cool piece from Helen. Now if we move on to Alison, 
Alison um, Bomber has also done some really cool samples. She loves hot picks and is always working with them um, in really innovative ways. She's used white embossing powder here and also worked with our waxed craft paper. Um, and when you heat that up, it's almost like the image sort of becomes a little bit spooky and sinks down into the wax. And she did quite like doing her tags as pairs, which has worked really well. And then this is on a crackle background, so she used a crackle glaze to really emphasise that slightly spooky feel. Here she's got some great bottles. So she um, was really thinking about labels when she was when she first saw the stamps, and she decided that making labels for bottles was the way to go. Love how the bottles are glazed, nice and nice and shiny. And here's another much more dimensional piece. Again, just lots of layers in there. In the background, you just I love how she's using embossing powder to just add shine to the image as well. And then lastly, we've got a couple of samples here from Lauren Hatwell. And she, similar to Alison, has created lots of embossed layers, but she's used black so that they're popping off the black there, so it's a resist technique. And then the white on the top layer, that really stands out as a contrast. And in this one here, she's filled vials with paint. And that just gives this fantastic, um, really cool dimensional element to it. And she's even dripped, it looks like hot glue along the sides there and along the fronts of them. And down this whole piece here, there's actually a lot of drippage going on. It's a really cool piece. Love the colours and the labels. It really brings out the detail of the stamps when you start to add colour. So that's the Halloween stamp with lots of ideas for you. We've got two Christmas Hot Pick stamps. Let's start with this one. This is Hot Pick Christmas 08. Um, if they come on Easy Mount, then they've got an EZ on the end. And this one, as you can see, everything is trimmed out and ready to go. So the great thing about this stamp is that there's some images on there which are really good for doing quick and easy Christmas cards. But you've also got some great quotes as well, which we all know you need to put on a Christmas card on, on the whole. It does help. <laughs> so if you want to use um, some or part of these images, you can. Um, they're really quite versatile. I've got a couple of samples here that Darcy's made. Um, you can see on this one here, she's just used one of the spiral trees out of the center here from the stamp design. And even the snowflake there is this little snowflake here. It's quite common for people to get their stamps and cut them up even further. So for example, this particular stamp here, there's a snowflake flake you can take your scissors and cut around that and cut that little bit there off and then just use a snowflake on its own if you wish so don't be frightened to do that just because we provide them trimmed doesn't mean you can just go a little bit further if you wish um, on this particular sample here Darcy's used the little trees at the top there and just run them across there in a row um, to, to create a sort of row of trees, put little tiny white dots on to look like snow. And then that textural tree there, she's used in the background and stamped over the top with that little feature tree down there. So, you know, quite a simple sort of composition. There's a nice quote on there, but she's used quite a lot um, in a really great way to create a tag. So let's take a look at the second stamp set. Um, this is it here. So again, um, some quite large stamps on here that could be used on their own or in combination, as you'll see from some of the artwork I'm going to show you in a minute. There's a little set of trees. There's a Santa there. There's really quite a lot going on. So let's flick through some of the other samples that we've been sent by our great designers. So the, this one here is by Alison. And she's using the first set, Christmas Plate 8. So she's got that quote down the bottom. And then she's also used the texture tree as a background and then stamped the detail over the top, which is a great idea. And you can see at the top here, she's got little reindeer. Now that is actually from this other set of stamps, Christmas 09. She's just obviously snipped those off to use them and put them across the top there. Let's have a look at the stamp. Okay, so here she's just probably cut that off there so that she can use the reindeer on their own with the little Santa. Great idea. And here's another set, another sample from Alison. 
again using that texture tree so she's kind of created a background stamped a quote on there and then used the other detail tree and put a bit of bling on the tree this one here Again, she really likes her mixed media backgrounds and on this particular background she's used um, the Paper Artsy stencil which has got all the numbers on the background and that's where the 25 has come from. That She's picked out the numbers 2 and 5 and then used them on there. And lastly, that one there where she's done a more traditional matting and layering of one particular image but then put that onto a mixed media background there's quite a bit of crackle going on in here you've got a little bit of bling and she's even used some stamps from squiggly ink those little circles are a squiggly ink stamp and um, and she's used a bit of text stamp as well from ink and the dog okay let's move on to the other Allison she's also used um, stamps um, from both stamp sets quite well as um, mix them all mixed and matched um, they are using our new paints so for this particular set of um, artwork they're all using the the new pink and the new professor plum and um, captain peacock the jade and lots of different you know different ways some of them use it really bright and some use, use it in a much more subdued tone so on here she's got the little squiggly trees crackle background and she stamped and embossed over the top Here's a couple of tags and she's cut this out and layered it up to make a real feature and then this is a bit similar where she's made sort of Christmas baubles. Love the little bit of script stamping in the background too on that one and this is a much larger sample. It's just really nice how she's worked on the craft card and really roughed up the edges of the card. And here she's used like a credit card to create the paint, um, stripes of paint colour. And then really splattered paint over the top to give all those nice colours of splatter. A little tag layered on top. And this tag uses stamps from both collections as well. This time she's stamped and embossed in white and then use the same sort of technique with the credit card there. Now even tiny little gift tags, so she's got two here where she's used the stamp here with the Santa on it from Hot Pick Christmas 09. And with layers of paint she sort of blocked out an area in the blue or the pink at the, in the background then did the crackle technique on top with a bit of white paint and then stamped the image on top of that. These two samples, she's done blended backgrounds. So she started with the colour very dark at the bottom, then softened it through at the top to get that sort of ombre effect. And then just stamped and embossed an image on top. And then we've got another couple of tags. That one. And this one. So that's some great samples. Lots and lots of ideas from Alison. And then Penny's got a couple of cards here where she's used a bit of words as the background, some wire on there. Again, she's also created and layered up. And very similar with this. Got the wire in the background there for a bit of texture. And then this one is using acetate. So she's stamped on the acetate to sort of create a window. And I love how the trees have stamped up at the bottom on this one. So that's just those three little trees off the top of that stamp. And just by stamping them in different colours, she's, cre she's uh, created a great little feature at the bottom. And then she made this amazing box and decorated all of that. And then inside there's this fantastic acetate. So that really pops up as a textured window at the front there. Again, she's used those little trees in the background and she's got the same idea as Alison with the little Santa and the reindeer. And then we'll finish with some samples from Helen Chilton. So this is one of Helen's using lots of um, embossing powders and texture and a little bit of sparkle in there. On this one, she's combined two stamps. 
So the first stamp she's actually used with all the writing on here, she's used um, this Merry Christmas stamp here and I'm combined it with this one here. So if I take them off, you can see what she's done. So there's the three little trees at the top and then this stamp here and she's layered the two together to create a Christmas tree, which is quite cool. And then just sort of shaped it all. So that was quite thinking outside the box. Don't know how she does it. <laughs> and she's got all sorts of patterns and things in the background as well. And that's Helen. And the last sample from Helen, here again, she's done a bit of a mashup of different stamps. Um, so you can see on this one here, the feature image is from that stamp down the bottom there. And then she's also got the Santa from this one here. But then around the bottom here, she's used the Christmas, which is from this stamp here. So she's just stamped the words Christmas around the edge. And then she's pinched the snowflake as well which I think is the snowflake off the top of the tree here. That little snowflake there. And she's just put that in between the words when she's got Christmas. And the way she's made that Christmas really pop is by using a white um, paint pen over the top or a jelly roll pen, um, a gel pen. She's then just added that little white, which really takes, if that's too heavy for you with the Christmas, it's a good way to make things pop. And you can really do it to add detail. She's also done it across the bottom here, up the sides of the tree, and, um, and on the word at the bottom there. So a lot of detail in what Helen does and how she makes things layer up. But she's really quite clever at how, how she gets those things to happen. Then she's got nice ferns on here, which is one of our stencils with beautiful texture on the top from her embossing powders. So there you go. That's some really um, great ideas with our new Christmas stamps. Um, they're available from your favourite paper artsy stockist now. Do make sure you support your local independent retailer. They really appreciate your business.